Praise the Lord, saints. This is Pastor Glenda Gray coming to you once again from Zion Ministries. Today, I'd like to speak with you for just a few minutes about the Ark of the Covenant. Many of us are familiar with the Ark of the Covenant, but we don't quite understand what it is talking about. Uh, we see during the time of Moses uh, and the children of Israel that God gives Moses instructions to make an ark of shittim wood, and he tells them specific instructions of how to uh, make the ark. And as they go along, God begins to tell them what to place inside of the ark. And he has Moses to place three things inside of the ark of the covenant. The first thing he has him to book to to put into the ark is the tablet of, of, of law, the stones of law that God has given unto Moses. The second thing he has him to put in there is the rod of Aaron. He also has them to put manna uh, in there as they're eating the manna as they go through their wilderness journey. Now, each one of those things, what we need to understand, represent the word of God. We know that the, the Ten Commandments are the word of God. Uh, then we have to remember that the rod of Aaron uh, represents the rod of Jesse, which is the lineage of Jesus Christ. And when we think about the manna, we know that in John, the book of John, in the New Testament that Jesus let the people know when they said that when God gave our forefathers manna in the wilderness, Jesus let them know that he is the true manna. So every one of those things represent Jesus Christ. And when they're placed into the Ark of the Covenant, that represents how we carry the word. But God gave specific instructions on who was to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And we see that it was the Levitical tribe. Now today, we let anybody carry the word of God, but that's not what God told us to do. And we've got to make sure that we remember that he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He changed it not. So the same instructions he gave us on yesterday are the instructions we are to follow today. What does that mean for the church today? Well, when we look at the scripture and we even still looking at the Old Testament, we see that when uh, Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, take the Ark of the Covenant into their battle uh, and they were not following God, but they took that Ark of the Covenant into the battle thinking that the presence of God, which is what the Ark represent, represented, the presence of God with them, that when they took the Ark of the Covenant, they were going to beat their enemies, even though they were not obeying what thus says the Lord. God was not pleased with the children of Israel at the time. And so what God did was he allowed their enemies to uh, take the Ark of the Covenant away from them and the children of Israel lost that battle. At the same time, the promise that God had given to Eli that because he had not corrected his sons who were priests within the church, but they were uh, taking away the things that belonged to God. They were taking the offerings, making people not want to bring the offerings there. And they were also uh, messing with the women within the church. And God was not pleased with what they were showing to God's people. God had already told Eli that he was going to allow his sons to both die on the same day. So when they went into that battle, uh, Eli and Hop, uh, I'm sorry, Phineas and Hophnius, they both died there. And then when they came back from battle to Eli to tell Eli what had happened, Eli accepted the fact that his son were both dead. But when they told him that the Ark of the Covenant had been taken by the enemies, Eli fell over and broke his neck and died because he could not imagine having to be on this earth without the presence of God with him. Likewise, when Phineas' wife heard that uh, his, her husband had died, her father-in-law died, and the Ark of the Covenant had been taken by their enemies. She goes into labor and delivers a son. She uh, named the son Ebenezer, which means the glory is gone because of the fact that the glory of God had left the children of Israel. And we need to re recognize that because of what we're doing in the church right now, the glory of God has left us as well. So we need to come back and begin to do those things that are pleasing to God within the church. Remember in Revelation, Jesus is not speaking to the world. He's speaking to the churches to let them know that they are out of order. And I 
out of that seven churches, only two were doing the things that they were called to do by God. We want the presence of God. We need the presence of God. And when we see this pandemic, we see all of these storms that are, are raging through our our, 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 our world. We need the presence of God. We need his protection. We can't make it without him. And so we've got to rely on God. And as God told King Asa, I will be with you as long as you are with me, letting us know that the same thing is for us, that God will be with us. We'll be covered by the blood of Jesus as long as we do what thus says the Lord. Remember the scripture, there is one scripture that said there's none righteous, no, not one, but there is another scripture that said that we're made righteous by keeping God's commandments. And how will we know it unless we study to show ourselves approval to God so that we can be workmen who need not be ashamed so that we may be able to write and divide the word of truth. We need to recognize the church today needs to recognize that we can't do just whatever we want to do. This is about the saving of the souls of God people. It's not about money. It's not about the size of the church. It's not about how many people come into the building and leave out the same way. See, when you come into the presence of Jesus, you can't leave the same way that you came. And if our people in the church are still doing whatever they want to do, they're not changing from their old ways, then we have not met the requirements of what God has called us to do. And so we also need to make sure that within the church, we're being a good example, which means that the, the carrying of God's word is only supposed to be by those whom God has called, those whom God has chosen. Remember that he's called some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists, which means all of those are the ones who are to carry God's word. So teachers, we, we, we pick anybody to be our Sunday school teachers, anybody, can, but do they have a calling from God? We've got to stop going out on our own. The scripture says in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. So we've got to come back to God and ask God to lead us, ask God to guide us. Lord, you show us the way that we can do the things that you've called us to do, Father, that we may be able to come to you you as David did when you punished him and he asked you to stay the hand of the death angel. We're asking you to please Lord help us and we can only do it if we repent of our sins and come back to you. It's time for the church to turn back to God and stop following our own ways. So many of us are trying to draw God never gave us that instruction. That's what God said he would do. He said, if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. We need to, we need to stop trying to do God's job and find out what is our job as preachers, as teachers, as pastors, so that, so that we will be the good under shepherd that God has called us to be and stop allowing God's people to go astray because we don't know what we're supposed to do because we're trying to do everything else. We're trying to bring the church down to the world. But one thing my mother told, told me that has stayed with me all through these years, she said, we need to stop trying to bring the church down to the world and begin to uh, and come back to bringing the people up to the church. We cannot tell people, uh, come as you are. There is no such scripture. Stop making up scriptures. We are supposed to follow what thus said the Lord. The scripture never says come as you are. When we come as we are, we give God a Cain offering, which is not pleasing to God. We want to give an Abel offering. We want to give God our very best. We want to stop giving to the world better than what we give to God. And God never says, said, come as you are. He said, I am a jealous God. Thou shall have no other God, God before me. And so that means that whatever is our best. Now, if Jean's your best, if that's all you have, yes. But if it's not, give God your very best. Stop doing things that we uh, that man has told us to do and seek God's word and find out what God is telling us to do because only then will we do what is pleasing to God. And when, at the end of the day, if I tell you wrong, I'll have to pay for what I have done, but you'll still have to pay for what you have done as well. So read the scriptures for yourselves so that you will know what God is saying unto us. 
Remember that in Jeremiah 31, 31, uh, when God is speaking about the new covenant, he, he tells us that uh, this is the new covenant that from here on out, he will no longer write his word upon stone. He will write his word upon flesh, which means our spirit. And so we've got to have our spirit open to God. Let our hearts not turn to stone because God is not going to write his word when our hearts have turned to stone. But when we allow our hearts to be that flesh that God wants to write upon, he said, no longer will any man have to tell you about him. Everybody will have a mind of him. So we as the preachers are just here to remind you of what thus said the Lord. Allow God to come into your heart. Allow God to write upon your heart his word so that you will know what God expects of us. So that when this journey is over and we have been called from labor to reward, we can stand in his presence. And when we stand there, there will be two books, not just one. There will be two books. There will be a book of works, the works of everything we've done in this body, whether good or bad. And then there will be the Lamb's book of life. Now, all of our names will be in that book of works. Now, and so, and it will list if we've been good or whatnot, we've been bad. Not for Santa, but for God to, to view. And so, some of our names will have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but will have been blotted out because we have fallen away from God. I know some men say you can never lose your salvation, but that's man talking. Go back and hear God. God says that a righteous man who turns away from his righteousness, he said if he dies in it, God will not remember any righteous thing that he has ever done. Man does not have the, uh, the authority to erase what God has said and what God has done. Jesus in Matthew 5, 17 reminds us to think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. He said, not, uh, not one jot, not one tittle of the law shall pass until all has been fulfilled. It will not all be fulfilled until Jesus comes again. Listen to God, hear God, and don't let man have you walking away from God because he said it. Read it for yourself that you may know God for each one of us has to give an account for ourselves. And I don't know about you, but when it's time for me to give my account of my life, I want to hear my God say, well done, good and faithful servant. If you want to do that, then you've got to follow what thus says the Lord. That's all I have for today. God bless you. God keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen.